the North Atlantic Ocean, known for its unpredictable weather, is about to bite us. We are a week into our ocean passage, from Bermuda to the Azores, nearly a thousand miles from land, with nowhere to shelter, facing gale force winds as we battle our way east across the North Atlantic Ocean. This is the reality of gale force conditions on a 37 foot boat out on the open ocean. There is nowhere to run to, nowhere to hide. Over the course of our circumnavigation, we have experienced many sailing conditions, but never this much wind for so many days in a row. This is certainly going to be a passage to remember. We are Amy and Matt, and this is Florence, our home and safe haven upon the ocean. Together, we have sailed over 46,000 miles around the globe on a seven-year voyage of discovery. And now it's time to sail back to where this journey began. We have been at sea for a week since leaving our pit stop in Bermuda. Before we left, we looked for the best possible weather window with no storms. The trouble is that the weather forecast only goes out for a week, so once you pass that point, the weather you get is in the lap of the gods. Even today, the forecast did not show gale force winds, but that is what we have got. Out here, there is no option but to reef Florence down and deal with it. One of the biggest challenges for any shorthanded crew sailing across an ocean is dealing with sleep deprivation. Bad weather makes it even more difficult to sleep on your off watch, so you will see in our faces that we are both tired. Rest assured that although it may not seem it, we are in fact enjoying ourselves and relishing the challenge. Morning. Well, that was a crappy night. Sure enough, the wind and uh, the sea state did build. And uh, yeah, we haven't had a night like that at sea for quite a long time. As it built, we dropped the mainsail completely, so we were just sailing under staysail. Then it was completely pitch black, and the sea state just built up, and you could just hear the waves breaking either side of Florence. You couldn't see a thing, and you're just waiting for the one that breaks right on Florence, and sure enough, yeah, we had three waves which completely broke into the cockpit, flooded the cockpit. I got completely nothing, so these waterproofs are not waterproof anymore, unfortunately, so they're quite soggy inside here. And Amy, bless her, when she came on left to drop the mainsail, she had to go up to the mast, put the mainsail down, and it was blowing 35 knots at that point in time. Uh, her waterproofs aren't waterproof any either, so she's pretty soggy as well, so she's about to come on watch. I'm pretty shattered. Uh, she's going to be shattered too because when it's conditions like this, the boat's getting thrown around, the stuff getting thrown around down below, the cutlery drawer keeps getting thrown open, it's now lashed shut because <laughs> it kept spilling everything across the boat. And uh, yeah, a very, very tiring night. I guess it's what I was expecting from the North Atlantic Ocean. It's supposed to be one of the tougher oceans to cross. Um, the forecast I saw yesterday so that we're going to have the same conditions for the next few days. Um, I'm really hoping that when I look at the forecast later today, it's going to say something different. So yeah, very soggy. Uh, even, even with this tent on the waves, it's getting completely straight in. Uh, I was sat here and I still got a wave over my head, believe it or not. I'm not quite sure how that works, uh, but I did. And Florence was right over on her ear, so everything's getting thrown around. And right now, even though the wind's dropped off now to just 20 knots, we've got no appetite to put any more sail area right now. So, we might just kind of mosey along with this for a little while. And... But yeah, as you can probably tell, I'm quite tired. So, maybe it's going to appear in a minute and I'm going to try. Well, I'm going to go and lie below. I'm probably not going to sleep, but I'm just going to go and lie below. Get out of these wet clothes. Morning! <laughs> I've got a mouthful of cracker and I look like a scarecrow. I think 
I don't think I got any sleep at all last night. That was pretty horrendous. That's the closest to a knockdown, a full on knockdown that we've ever had. Oh, that first one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I actually had my hand on the wheel for it. It would have been worse if I hadn't had my mm -hmm. hand on the wheel. Yep. We also discovered uh, <laughs> we finally got the main down and I went back down below and I'm like, oh, finally I can get some, some rest at least. <laughs> a wave came and washed over the dough raid vent, which has never, ever leaked there before and poured water through right onto my head. <laughs> It's not just how much you get thrown across the boat when a wave breaks over the boat like that, but it's also the sound, the power of the waves is incredible and it just makes this in like incredible roaring sound. And your first instinct is to call up on deck and check that the person who's on deck is still there. And I didn't realize until I found our camera box which is a hard case box that we put our camera lenses into um have been flung out of the safe place that we keep it luckily the camera seems okay um and i've been enjoying myself on my morning watch this morning trying to take some photos of the waves the morning watch is my favorite watch possibly because it's a little bit shorter. It's three hours instead of the, the four hours. Um, I also get the chance at the moment to see the sort of end of the sunrise. It's just a really nice kind of quiet, reflective time for me. Both the wind and the sea state have eased off this morning, so hopefully Matt's been able to get some sleep and I will be able to go down below and try and do the same my, myself in a second. Good morning, sleepyhead. literally just come off watch and had enough time to get my kit off and relax in bed and close my eyes and just fallen asleep and that shouted at me to get kitted up the winds got up and it is absolutely pouring it down so i'm just on standby it doesn't look very nice out there okay got blue skies again behind us it was looking really gray and then it suddenly just started raining and then just the water went white just in front of the cloud <laughs> and then we had we went from uh, 26 knots to 40 knots so we were running downwind with triple reef mainsail and the staysail on the pole when that happened and we don't have the staysail on the hurler otherwise we'd have just furled it so what we did was we just uh, from the cockpit let off the line that held it onto the pole and pulled it across so it's hidden behind the, the mainsail so at least that reduced our sail area a bit as quickly as we could without going out of the cockpit. And now it's flowing through. This is what it was like before, but just with a big grey cloud and suddenly just started actually chucking it down and everything went nuts. Okay. I'm just really tired. I just can't remember the last time that I had an off watch where I didn't have to get up part way through it or go to bed late or get up early to help jibe or change the sails or deal with something on deck or 
or down below. Just need some sleep. However, the weather was not ready to let us sleep. With more squally weather approaching on the horizon, along with a big wind shift, it meant we both needed to be on deck to drop the mainsail and jibe. As best we can, we try to avoid waking the other person on their off watch. We try to time any increase in sail area or jibe for watch change when we are both already awake. But a rapid increase in the wind that needs a reduction in sail must be dealt with immediately, meaning broken sleep for whoever is unlucky to be off watch at the time. To drop the mainsail and jibe, first we take the pole in, as it will need to go out on the other side once we've jibed. Then we sheet the staysail in tight, Amy goes up to the mast, ready for me to steer up into the wind and release the main halyard. I pull the mainsail down at the mast and then signal Matt to bear away again. Once we're on a steady downwind course, I put a sail tie around the main to hold it in place and we secure the boom onto the centre line. With that done, we can simply jibe the staysail over to the other side and set our wind vane sail steering up on the new course. earlier comes through it makes you a little bit nervous about having <laughs> any amount of sail area up so although before the school we had triple reef main sail and stay sail wing on wing and that was absolutely perfect we didn't find it wasn't too much sail area it definitely was too much in that school and now that school has gone through it would be absolutely fine with that sail that sail plan again but just because we've had that school even though it doesn't really seem to be one on the horizon we just felt safe with just dropping the main sail so we've Drop that, we're going to do with just the stay sail now, which means we're going about a knot and a half slower, which makes a massive difference in time over days and weeks when you're at sea in terms of how long it's going to take you to get there. But it's a lot more relaxing because you're not constantly looking at the horizon and going, Is that cloud going to start raining? Is that one going to give us a, a squall? Um, because if it does, then well, you've got the sail, the right sail for it anyway. So, so we're going to go a little bit slower for a little while until we've had a bit of a rest and then uh, I think probably we'll end up putting that mainsail back up and go back to pole out but on the other on the other jibe because we had a bit of wind chip so time to have a rest now we should explain why we're using the triple reef mainsail instead of the Genoa usually when we're sailing downwind in these conditions our preferred sail plan would be the Genoa on the pole and stale sail wing on wing without using the mainsail but we have a problem with our Genoa. Do you remember the stitching I was doing on the Genoa in Bermuda? Well, it turns out I didn't do enough. And a few days into this passage, we realised that more of the UV damaged stitching on the leech is breaking up. At the moment, it could be fixed by an hour with a sewing machine. But if we use it in these strong conditions, it would come apart and could rip. That means that when the wind strength drops off, instead of just simply unfurling the Genoa, which is a one person task, we need to round up into the wind and hoist a triple reef mainsail, which is a two-person task, and vice versa when the wind increases again, meaning a lot more work for us on board. How are you? Yeah, all right. It's damp. It's only about 30 knots maximum this time, so it's not so bad. It's just been really squally all day. Sometimes it's looked like absolutely beautiful blue skies and the sea state has flattened off and then you can see the band of rain approaching from the horizon but it's not been too bad so far this afternoon. Wouldn't be without that tent though. <laughs> I'm really glad that we've got this tent, uh, it's been awesome this passage. We're still coming in a little bit off the back. We've already been talking about a few design changes um, that we might try and, and squeeze into our very long jobs list when we're back in the UK, uh, ready for the Arctic. But yeah, it's very, very welcome to have a bit of shelter on this passage. The challenge of managing Florence through these more difficult conditions gives us a stronger connection to the journey we are making and a greater sense of achievement. 
This is certainly becoming a passage we will remember. Yesterday we got enough of a lull in the wind and the waves to both have a bucket shower which was a very welcome treat <laughs> and I'm feeling much better for that today. But today the wind and the waves are back, uh, they actually came back late yesterday afternoon. We've got regularly sort of 20-25 knots, um, sometimes gusting up more and the, the sea state is again pretty rough. Most of the waves aren't really that bad. It's just occasionally we get this massive set come through. They normally come through as a set of three and they'll break like on Florence's stern just as we're at the top of them. And then we'll just come screaming down them. Occasionally, if we're unlucky, they hit us slightly more from the side and just really send us skating sideways down, down the wave. And we've got to be a bit on it to make sure that we're ready to grab the wheel if that happens and just try and keep us straight down the wave. But the, the Aries is doing incredibly well. I've been really impressed with it over the last few days. It seems to always do better the windier that it is. Unfortunately, one of those really big sets of waves caused me a bit of a problem last night. I was so tired that I went to bed and on the leeward side and I figured it hadn't, we hadn't really been rolling. The, the waves were just kind of tipping me into the bunk. And so I didn't tie up the lee cloth and I got about two hours of really solid sleep. I was absolutely dead to the world. And then we got hit by a massive wave and were surfing down it. And I got flung completely out of the bunk and across the boat and hit our table, which is in the middle of the boat with such force that I broke the table so completely ripped it out of the floor so we spent the rest of, of that watch trying to tie that up and secure it until we get to the Azores and, and can do a better job of fixing it. Despite all of that I really enjoyed my morning watch again this morning. I don't like the waves so much when I'm trying to sleep but in the morning when the sun's rising and I'm just kind of keeping watch and, and watching the waves I find that they're like, it's like watching an, a roaring fire. It's really comforting in a way and, and mesmerizing. Although we've had a lot of squalls over the last few days, in between the squalls, some of the sailing's actually been beautiful. I mean, this afternoon, the breeze has just calmed down a little bit. Still got fairly big waves, but not too steep. And Florence is just moving along really nicely. And it's just beautiful to be out here on the ocean. But in order to appreciate being out here on the ocean like this, you need to have managed to get enough sleep to actually enjoy it. And uh, that's the problem with the squalls, you end up not getting a lot of sleep so you're really sleep deprived and you just don't really look around you and appreciate the beauty of where you are you just want to kind of get it over with sometimes and you wonder why you do it but then you have a nice evening like tonight and it's just 
Uh, this is why we do it, come out across oceans. It's just beautiful out here. Probably about 600 miles from land at the moment. It's not often that you get to do that on, uh, on the planet. But this was only a brief respite before the wind built back up again. The next day, we were back to hanging on as Florence was tossed around by the growing sea state. wild out there this morning. I've just come off my morning watch. I had 30 knots sustained and we dropped the mainsail which was a bit of a, round, a hairy roundup and um, now we've just got really steep seas building. Uh, we're running just under the stay sail and when I came down below we were doing seven knots. I'm gonna go and see how Matt's doing on deck. You can hear the static on the radio and there's no ships to be seen on AIS um, so that's the lightning. I think I've heard some rumbles of thunder in the distance too. It certainly didn't look very nice behind us, a great big black cloud approaching. If it gets up any more, we're gonna be running, we're gonna to have to switch over to the storm jib and I think we might have to do that. It sounds crazy. Oh, and then any more than that, we're gonna to have to start running some lines behind us as a drogue to try and slow down so we're not surfing these waves so much. Matt looked at the forecast this morning, just downloaded the forecast before I came off watch, and um, it's saying that we're gonna have this wind strength for the next couple of days, and unfortunately the sea state is building even more. Uh, we've currently got nearly four meter seas, and then it's forecast to get up to about 4.4. Um, I think that was tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we both expected from the North Atlantic. It is certainly delivering what we expected from this passage so far. Absolutely diabolical out here. We have got 42 knots of wind. We're in the middle of a thunder and lightning storm. This is not nice at all. The waves are getting up as well. Do you think we're okay on the stay sail or do you think we need to? I don't want to change anything at the moment unless we have to. Us going out there would be. I think we're okay. Hopefully it'll drop off once the uh, once the thunderstorm goes away. really bother me you can just shorten sail or even take all of the sails down it doesn't really cause a problem it's the size and the steepness of the waves that are the issue I don't know how 
how many times you want to poke the camera out the hatch and say how are we going and it's blowing 42 knots again just like the entire surface of the sea around us has just been blown off it's completely white absolutely howling Luckily we've only got the stay sail up because we just tried to drive down a wave which is kind of okay with the stay sail. Aries is doing an amazing job but uh, it's not relaxing blue water sailing. It's uh, I think hair, ra hair raising white water sailing. I think you're cursed. As you can see behind that the sun is just setting. I've been on deck for nearly six hours and it's been fine all day. And then as soon as you go and watch, and I try and get some sleep, we get this again. Yep. There's a full rainbow now in front of Florence. We're going to go through the rainbow into another dimension where it's not <laughs> blowing 40 knots. We're about to sail through a rainbow. I've never heard that happen before. Worth coming out into the Atlantic in a 42 knot score just to sail through a rainbow. Absolutely. If only there was somebody behind us to take a picture. Oh. There's no one else stupid enough to be out here. Oh, there's plenty of people stupid enough to be out here. It's quite an impressive rainbow. Someone's coming back out. over for my morning watch this morning it was blowing a mere 20 to 25 knots and we both had the conversation about potentially needing to put some more sail over it to actually keep moving and I'm glad that I waited because it wasn't long afterwards that I looked behind me and there's a massive dark cloud approaching and then within minutes we've got 46 knot gusts again so yeah, that was uh, a bit hairy. It's now blowing like, you know, only like 35 or so. <laughs> it's really, really light. Florence handles it so well though. I really love this boat. It's got to the point now as well that we've had so many 40 plus knot squalls go through that it doesn't really feel like a big deal anymore and it's, it's actually really enjoyable. I've worn away too much. Just had enough time to run and put the proper camera, store it down below. But it's, <laughs> in a way it's frustrating because like, these waves are so beautiful. It's amazing how quickly the sea state builds up just when the wind picks up a little bit. Oh. I actually really enjoyed this passage overall, to be honest. Which in some ways makes me question my sanity. But yeah, I love this boat. I love ocean sailing. The sun's just going down on what is supposed to be the last day of the big winds. It's actually been a beautiful day, really. We've been charging along. We put the mainsail up at lunchtime, and we've been doing six or seven knots ever since. 
and the sea state's easing, so we're just being just gently pushed forward by the by the waves rather than surfing down them manically. So it's uh, really quite nice. Still rolling a little bit. There's a lot more shipping around as well. So we've been watching this massive container ship that's coming up behind us on AIS since it's about 30 miles away with our uh, M-Track AIS transceiver up the, with a splitter. So we've got using the masthead VHF aerial for it, we can see for a long way on AIS, which is great because you really know when things are coming. I'm really looking forward to have that when we get to the more congested shipping areas of the English Channel. So when the breeze starts to get a bit lighter tomorrow, we're going to have to start putting up a bit more sail area, shaking reefs out the mainsail. We're probably going to find that this staysail is then a bit too small, but of course with the stitching issue we've got on the Genoa, uh, if we want the Genoa we're going to have to swap the one that's up there currently for the old one. Uh, and that's a bit of a pain in the backside to do at sea when it's windy or we might just have to go straight for the spinnaker. We hope you enjoyed seeing some of the reality of sailing a small boat out on the open ocean in some rough weather. There's plenty more of that to come as we continue our voyage into the Azores and then the next leg from the Azores to England. But in reality, we are actually ahead of where we are in the videos. Right now, we are actually already approaching our home port of Portsmouth Harbour in the UK. And a lot of people asked if it would be possible to come and see us sail in. So we are going to be arriving next weekend on Saturday the 23rd of September. And if you'd like to come and see us sail in the last leg to our home port, then please see the homecoming invitation video for all of the details. We hope to see you there. Next time, after 12 days at sea, we sight land in the remote islands of the Azores. 800 miles off the coast of Europe. Landing on Flores, we discover a rugged, lush landscape that we can't wait to explore. Don't forget to subscribe to catch the next episode. We release a video every two weeks. we want to say a massive thank you to everyone who supports the making of these videos and especially our star patrons.